together. It's good to see all the fellowship going on. Everybody having conversation. <laughs> Great. We'll just go ahead and get started and you can uh, continue doing what you're doing. So. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 1 John 4, 7. And today is our the Advent Sunday of love. And so we want to uh, focus on that, and we'll hear more about that as the service goes forward. Um, so let us pray. Father God, we uh, come before you and we thank you for your love for us and help us to be able to be people of love as well. Father, we see, uh, see the candles burning and we see the, the flames there, Lord. Uh, just uh, kind of thinking of the, the, these poems of a song that you know, we are the wick and you are the flame. So we want to burn for your name, Lord, and help us, Lord, to, to burn brightly for you uh, this time, especially this time of year, Lord, and uh, as the, the flames are getting brighter and brighter as the Sundays go by, and Father, we just want to be people who are on fire and burn for you and, and for your name, Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would bless this, this time together in our worship. Amen.
around yon virgin mother and child holy infant so tender and mild sleep in heavenly peace sleep in heavenly town is sleeping shepherds safe within the fold free from danger want or cold silent silent night holy holy night sleep in peace sleep in heavenly peace in peace silent night a town is sleeping shepherds Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent, love. Sometimes we forget that the incarnate God took on all that it means to be human. The love of God has come for us wherever we are. Jesus didn't flee from complicated feelings or situations. Instead, he entered into them. He doesn't flee from us either. He seeks to embrace us in the midst of our messiness. We are the beloved of God no matter what. The story of Christmas reminds us that there is uh, that there is no distance that God wouldn't travel to be with us. The love of God seeks us out where we are. God desires to be with us. Because we are loved, we are reminded to love the people of the world. Just as Christ loved us in the midst of our mess, we are to love others where they are. May we love others where they are, just as we have been loved. Today we light the fourth Advent candle, the candle of love. Love is at the heart of the Christmas story. Love motivated God to give up heaven for humanity, to become Emmanuel, God with us. Love draws God near to us even now, even in the midst of our mess. Love motivates us to care for the world around us. We are the beloved of God, and we are called to be a community of love toward those around us. We are loved by God in the midst of our mess, and we are to be a community of love to the world around us. God of love, we sometimes forget that you came to earth for us. We sanitize the image of your coming, and we feel like we aren't worthy of the love of God, but you didn't shy away from messy circumstances. Instead, you entered right into the middle of them. Remind us that there is no distance you wouldn't go because of your great love for us. Then give us your heart of love for the world around us, that they may Know they are loved of you too. Amen. Right, yeah. 
Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time of worship that we can have here and with, with uh, all of us gathered here together as your, your people, your church, uh, lifting up our voices and our hearts to you. We are so grateful for your love. And Lord Jesus, your love has changed us. And Father, we ask that your love would continue to mold us and shape us into the people that you want us to be. Father, we ask, Lord, that you're, you would be with us. We, you are here with us. We know that. And uh, we ask that you would remain with us and that you would be pleased within uh, what we do here today, our efforts to, uh, to worship you and to glorify you, Lord. May it be pleasing to you. Father, we ask that you would... Uh, just guide us in this time and these the season that we're in, Father. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would help us to uh, take a deep breath and just really enjoy this season and remembering you in every moment of this time. Father, we can get so caught up in uh, just the things around us and and kind of miss the meaning. And Father, we ask that you would help us to take, to have a moment to reflect and to uh, remember the reason for the season is, is you. And um, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would come and visit your people as you are faithful to do so when we seek after you. Bless this time of our service here today. Amen. We... Our children, you go. You can go with uh, Amy back there. She's waving for you, waiting for you. Good, good, good. This morning, our message is going to be out of Matthew chapter one, uh, starting in verse eighteen. If you would. Uh, 
turn to whatever form of scripture that you want to uh, digital or or in the in the paper uh, or just uh, give a listening ear to uh, to the word of God this morning this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about his mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the the law and yet did not want to expose her publicly to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophets. A virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel had, of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no, he had, did not consummate their marriage until until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus this is the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God as we uh, look through here what has kind of stood out to me is that names are very important names were very important to the people of the first century Palestine at the time, and they were very important. It was, as if you go back up to the beginning of the chapter, there's a long lineage of people in the line of names. And all these names are very important that leads up to this moment of time. You know, and so, you know, names a lot of times were named, uh, carried down through uh, just the, the family line. A lot of times names were made, made because of uh, a character or, or, of, or just something that had happened within the, the birth of that person. I mean, even our names, uh, a lot of times, uh, I think most names uh, have some kind of a, a back uh, meaning to them. I know for, for my name, it, for Michael, it, it means who is like the Lord. And uh, and you, uh, Robin, is something like brightness or something like that. I think, uh, I think I was, was looking that up. So, anyway, it doesn't mean a bird, that kind of Robin. But <laughs> anyway, uh, but I'm sure all of our names have some kind of a a meaning behind them, and maybe not so much be the reason why our parents have named us what they named us, but. Uh, and then sometimes we may have nicknames that have uh, characterized who we are and what we've done over our lifetime. And, and so um, names really mean a whole lot uh, to, to us as a people. And it means a lot to God. Uh, Joseph was called uh, to name his son Jesus. Jesus, uh, I was a... Uh, having a conversation with Robin just recently, I, I haven't really read any or heard anything about. But I'm just—I was wondering if Jesus, the the Son of God, <laughs> Jesus, uh, was the was the very first name of Jesus on the earth. I don't know if there was any other Jesuses before him, but I know that there were Jesus after people were named Jesus after. Uh, he, he was born. Maybe that was the start of that name. I, I would have to do some research on that. But um, I know that during the, during, when Jesus was arrested and was tried, the, some of the, you know, we've heard the person Barabbas. Um, his full name was Jesus Barabbas. 
So that was meaning why some people had some confusion on which person do you want us to release to you? And some were, had confusion because they both had the name Jesus. But um, the Torah's prophecy and everything had to be fulfilled in the way that they did. And so, but uh, we, we look at this uh, with name Jesus. It, it, it means the Lord is salvation. And so, as it said in the scripture that we just read, that his name Jesus, which means that he will save his people from their sins. And he has come to save his people from our sins and continually doing that as well, even till today. And so, I don't believe that other people with the name Jesus or Jesus uh, would... Uh, I know, I know that they are not here to save us from our sins. There is only one Jesus that can save us from our sins. And salvation is of the Lord only and not of any other uh, person or uh, any other deity. Uh, but it comes from him alone. Uh, but to the Christian, to our Christian ears, the name Jesus is the, like the most precious uh, name that we can hear. We love to hear that name Jesus. We, we sing it many times in, in songs and worship. We love to hear that name Jesus. It is so uh, uh, precious to us and, and is uh, probably like, uh, in one of the songs is the sweetest name I know. And so we, we love that name Jesus. And for what it means and what it's done, because it brings us salvation, brings us forgiveness. It sets us free from the, the bondage of being a slave to sin that we once were in. But he has done so much for us and his love for us as a people. There are many, many names for, for our Lord, and we can go through, I mean, it's all through the Old Testament, a lot of Hebrew names uh, for, for God. We can, we can go this whole service naming of all the, the names for God, and I won't do that for you, but we, uh, we have a, there's a lot of names for him, just a few, just uh, as in this time, he is the Prince of Peace, he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And he is the God who provides for his people. And, just, uh, and it goes on and on of many, many names uh, that we, we have for him. Jesus, uh, his, uh, another name, it wasn't his last name, but Christ. Uh, Christ was a, a name which means the anointed one or the Messiah. And, and they, uh, they, they're all in one uh, uh, understanding of that name. So we, we see that uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He, he, he loved us so much that his, he sent his son to earth to be with us, his son Jesus, which is the Christ, and it is God with us. He is God in the flesh. That is really the, the incarnation of God is God is in the flesh, which is Jesus himself. He is the exact representation of his Father. He is the Father in, in, the, in the presence. He was here physically, now, but now he is also he's, he's here spiritually with us. He had loves us so much. He wants, wants to be with us. So Christ came. Christ has died. Christ has risen. And Christ will come again. And Christ is here now with us through the Holy Spirit in our presence, being with, with us where, wherever we go and whatever we do. He is with us because we, we've invited him into our lives. We invite him into our daily lives. We we want him. We need him. And, and it really assures us that he is with us. It helps us with our, to, to accomplish the things that we need to accomplish of knowing that he is with us. It gives us the strength that we need to go on, to move forward. And it's uh, reassuring to us that he is with us.
this incarnation of Jesus, God with us. This God with us gives us the courage in times of fear. It gives us strength in times of weakness. And there's, we can go on even probably even more things of the things that being in our presence that he can give us. He provides for us. He will give us wisdom. He will give us knowledge. He will give us what we need to continue on in this life as we serve him. I have a few a bunch of scriptures throughout th coming through the, the, the Old Testament on into the New Testament that I want to share with you about God with us. Starting in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, it says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1, 9. I have, uh, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Psalms 139, 7 through 10. Where, I, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hands will guide me. Your right hand will, will uphold and me fast. Isaiah 41.10 So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for your God for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Zephaniah 3 5. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you but rejoice in you over songs. Matthew 28, 20. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always until the very end of the age. Romans 8, 28. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor the powers, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, neither anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the last one is Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and to continue with what you have, uh, to be content with what you have, because God said, neither will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. And that should bring us great confidence of, and really looks at the, the great love that God has for us, that he wants to be with us. And that, that just, it really blows my mind. Uh, I, time and time again, I've, I've thought about that, that the God of the universe, the Son of God, wants to be with me so much. He wants to be a part of every detail of my life. He wants to be a part of your life. He is with us. He is with us in his spirit. He is with us wherever we go. There's no place that we can go on this earth 
we can hide to the heights or depths or, or across the sea or anywhere that we, can, we can't go. But he is there. He is with us. There's, there's no connection failure that we may have, no signal failure of, of anything. He is there, full strength of who he is, of his, his love for his people. As we look at this, that Jesus is the one that brings salvation to his people. And he's also the one that is always with us. He is always with us. He will never leave us, never forsake us, and always present. This should bring us peace, hope, joy, and love at this time, especially at this time of year as we focus on these areas through Advent. But let us continue to take, take this on beyond uh, the Advent season, beyond Christmas, of this Emmanuel God with us, not just in a season, but through life, he is with us. With our ups and downs, our strengths, our weakness, our fears, our courage, what, whatever we are going through. When we wake up in the morning, when we lay down at night, he is with us. Decisions that we need to make. He is with us. And so that has become, this has become one of my favorite names for God is Emmanuel. Because it really gives me great comfort. Knowing that I'm not alone, many times it feels like I am. But God is with me. And that brings me uh, great assurance. It, it brings me a peace of mind, peace of heart. It brings me hope that I can, I, can, I can get through this with his strength and with his help. It brings me joy in my heart and deep, deep within my soul. And that love that just surrounds me, just as, like almost fill his arms of love being around us. So I just want to encourage us this morning that God is with us and his great love that he has for us, that he wants to be a part of your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time this morning that we can focus on your presence in our life, your holy presence, your constant presence that you will never leave us. You are always with us wherever we go. You are, your hand is upon us, guiding us, helping us, giving us what we need. We thank you for your, your love. We, we've, we've felt and we see your, the great, the extent of your love was when you went upon the cross. And your love continues to be with us in our presence. Help us to receive your love. Help us to welcome you in to the rooms within our homes of our heart. Help us to receive that and to invite you to be a part of every area of our life, our daily life, because you want to be, because you are so in love with us. Thank you for your love. 
Help us to love one another in the way that you have loved us. Help us to love those who have not experienced your love so that they may experience your love. We ask that you would bless your people at this time of Advent, in the Advent season. Here in the, the already but not yet time, the in-between time of your first coming to your second coming. What a glorious day that'll be. And we have hope and we look forward to that day to be with you. Thank you for being with us. Amen. Seeking truth, they traveled from afar, hoping to find the child from heaven, and falling on their knees, they bowed before the humble Prince of Peace. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh, Lord, I bring an offering to you. I bring an offering to you. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence. No mortal man would dare to stand before your throne, before the Holy One of heaven. It's only by your blood, it's only through your mercy, Lord, I come. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh, Lord, I bring an offering to you. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh, Lord, I bring an offering to you. Oh, Lord, I bring an offering to you. I bring an offering to you. Bring an offering to you. Amen. Amen. Uh, Larry would wants to come up and share some things with you.
Well, I've got two announcements to make today. Um, first is this is the last um, reminder I'm going to give you that um, we're going to give Pastor Mike and Robin a love offering as our church um, Christmas gift to them. And that'll be next Sunday. And a lot of you have um, put money in already, so thank you for that. And uh, But... <clears throat> Um, there's still time, so you can do it this week or next week if you need to. So that's a reminder of that. And the other thing is the church board is going to give some Christmas presents to the people that um, support us here and work so hard week after week, like the soundboard um, crew back there and the uh, worship team up here. Um, but I believe Norman will not be here next week. Is that true? Yeah, I'm sorry I won't be here. Well, we'll we're sorry too, but we're still going to give you a gift, Norman. <laughs> so um, let's see. We really appreciate your faithfulness and how, how um, you um, served us here as the, the leader and uh, participant in the uh, worship team. So thank you so much. I just wanted to just to remind you, refresh you on some of the upcoming events. Um, we are uh, going to have some Christmas caroling on the 21st. Um, all right. Norm's excited about that. All right. Good. And uh, so, uh, yeah, if you all want to come out, come out and be a part of that, uh, it would be a great time. Uh, this next Sunday uh, is Christmas Sunday, and uh, it's, it's coming upon us, and uh, we uh, want to uh, encourage you to, uh, to be here early. We're going to have some uh, time of uh, refreshments and, and uh, gre uh, gathering time before the service. Are we still having Bible study? No, okay, it's, it's in here, but uh, uh, so the Bible study w will be really just our time of our time of fellowship, and so uh, so c still come at nine thirty, nine fifteen, and uh, be a part of that. And uh, everyone that's here, uh, just uh, have a some good time. We'll have some refreshments in the uh, fellowship hall, and uh, before service. And uh, so, just want to encourage you to come on out and be a part of that. Uh, just uh, also remembering the tithes and offerings. Be faithful to the Lord in that, and uh, may. The Lord be with you as, as we are reminded of his presence with us. Uh, God is with us, Emmanuel. Uh, so go in his, his love this today. Amen.